Hey there, baseball fans. It's Ben. I am back with one of my world famous baseball card collection player reviews. And this time it is Fred McGriff, the crime dog. And I thought, what a better, what better time to uh, show a Fred McGriff collection than right after he has just been uh, finally elected as an incoming member of the National Baseball Hall of Fame, uh, according to the Players Committee that uh, just elected him. Um, well, it depends on when you see this video, but yesterday or recently. So uh, everybody was kind of like thinking Fred McGriff was going to make it in. Uh, he is one of the only few players uh, who's kind of at or near that 500 home run mark who did not make it. He is, as far as we know, completely clean from PEDs in an era where tons of people were uh, involved in that. So he, um, you know, I'm glad to see him go in. Uh, great player. Played for six teams over, I don't know, what was it, 14, 18 seasons, something like that. Um, sorry, I should have that, those numbers in front of me, but uh, his lifetime batting average of 284, 2,490 hits, 493 home runs, just seven shy of that 500 home run mark, and then 1,550 RBIs. Uh, played for the Blue Jays, the Padres, the Braves, the Del Rays twice, actually, and the Cubs and the Dodgers. Uh, Five-time All-Star, World Series champ with the Braves in 95, three-time Silver Slugger Award winner, and he was the two-time home run leader in 89 and 92, which is one in each league, uh, one of only a couple players to do that. So these are all the cards I have pulled from packs, collections, and set breaks in the last couple of years. Uh, let's get into it. So starting off with one of his most iconic cards was 1986 Donruss. Donruss was way earlier to the game here. 1986, he was nobody. Um, but Donruss put him on the card, and this is not the Donruss card. This is the Leaf card. I've got five of them here in just perfect condition. Um, I had a Donruss one, but I sold it because that's it's still a kind of a hot commodity and a hot, hot card. When I was a kid, I used to trade baseball cards in the bus uh, on the way to school every morning. And there was one girl, Amanda Six, I'll never forget. She had this card and we always wanted it and, and tried to trade her for it all the time. And she would not let it go. So now I've got my own. Take that, Amanda. Um, as you can see, no major league ex experience at all here. But I've got five of these Leaf cards. Canadian Leaf. I think they're not as, they're not, this set, set obviously is not as popular as the Donruss set. But uh, I actually think it's kind of cooler because I never had much of those as a kid. Uh, moving on, his first Topps card is 1987 Topps Traded. So this is a pristine copy I got from a set break, which I think all these traded cards all have to be from set breaks at one point. Uh, moving on to his normal kind of rookie card, uh, or 1988, so 1988 Topps. Um, handful of those, a couple 88 Fleer. I'm sure there's a Fleer update, 87 for him, but I don't have that. Uh, 88 Score. And 88 Donruss, which wouldn't be his rookie, as you can tell, he has 86. And then he got put on the team card that year with uh, George Bell, Jorge Bell. And there is his 1988 Sports Flicks as well. But he broke in uh, pretty quickly as a real player in the space there, hitting 20 home runs that season in his first full big league season, uh, playing 107 games that year. And so in 89, everybody was all about him. Um, you can see 89, we've got his tops card. Is classic, the orange, uh, classic collection, the classic travel game there, eighty nine upper deck, and of course they put him as the uh, Blue Jays team card that year. So again, making an impact right away. Eighty nine Fleer, eighty nine Donruss, and Donruss said like, let's go all in. Let's give him a base card. Let's give him a Diamond King. Let's give him an MVP. Yeah, so they were all in on the on the crime dog train there. And there's eighty nine score to round us out for 89. Moving on to 1990, this would represent, um, actually they have him as an all-star here. Uh, I'm not sure he was on the all-star team in 1989 though. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure he wasn't actually. Yeah, interesting. So we have 89 tops all-star, there's his 89 tops uh, classic league leaders. There's nine, nine, or I'm sorry, 90 tops, uh, 90 upper deck, 90 score, the red border, 90 Fleer, 90 Donruss, and then I got a bunch of oddball things, so I've got his, there's his top sticker card, there's his superstar sticker, we've got some, what's that, Alice Burks on the back, Alice Burks, Quite a few different people in the back end. There's his 1990 Donruss uh, Baseball's Best. 
1990 Kmart with tops, and the 1990 Fleer Baseball MVP, as well as the classic uh, trivia game. Moving on to 1991, this is when he made his sh first shift from the Blue Jays over to the Padres. So 1991, there he is, upper deck, uh, regular series card in the Blue Jays, and then he had his high number series on the Padres, making that shift over there. 1991 Donruss. There's his Fleer card. Not a bad looking Fleer card for 91 Fleer, I'll be honest with you. There's score with an action shot, the bat on the ball. A Master Blaster from 91 score, 91 Fleer Ultra, which is a later release, has him on the Padres. Same thing with this OPG, Premier. And Studio, where we get to see him with balancing a baseball bat on his finger. We find out that Dave Parker and Doug Williams are his heroes. He also likes to play golf. Also a All My Children fan for uh, Glex Hats and the Bucks and the Magic are his uh, favorite teams because he is from Florida, which is a precursor to one of the teams he would join later on and spend two stints with the Tampa Bay Del Rays. All right, 1992, you can see 92 tops. There he is on triple play. With, uh, who's that, Ray Langford in the back there, maybe? Uh, 92 Fleer. There's Pinnacle. There is Stadium Club, and you can see his tops traded rookie card just like there on the back. There's Tops Kids, OPG Premier 92, the Moo Town Snackers Autograph Series. I think it's cheese, what Moo Town Snackers, yeah, Sargento Cheese. There's his 92 upper, uh, Donruss, 92 score, and then this upper deck hologram, which is a really cool design here, really nicely done hologram. And this is from uh, the MVP series. This is a, I think a 50 card set that uh, I broke up. There you go. And on to 1993, we got his 93 tops and he makes his next move, 93 tops, regular uh, release, Padres, and then update, or the traded series, he's on the Braves. So there he is making his move over to Atlanta where he would have his, MVP, his, uh, his uh, World Series ring. There's Pinnacle, there's Score Select, there is uh, triple play and the triple play insert for Crime Dog, one of the best nicknames in baseball. I think Chris Berman gave it to him, uh, relating him to McGruff, the FBI crime dog. And then I got a couple of these uh, diamond marks, bookmarks. On to 1994, 1994 tops here. I've got a few, few of these Fleer. So I've got a Fleer Diamond Tribute, which is I think a Fleer update insert series. Yep, yeah, from the set. Then we have the Lumber Company. For Fleer and another insert series. Uh, 94, the Blue Border Collector's Choice for Upper Deck. There's Score, Base Card, and then a couple of him and Gary Sheffield from Top Stadium Club, A Tale of Two Players, where they pair up two players and talk about it. Uh, Gary Sheffield, I think, is one of the only other players to maybe lead the league in home runs in two different leagues, if, that's, if I'm not mistaken there. I could be wrong, though. Um, no, no, he's one of a few... Uh, with 10 seasons with at least 30 home runs. So Gary Sheffield was the other one to have 10. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Only person to have uh, 30 home runs in, in in a season for five different teams. So Gary Sheffield and Fred McGriff. Those are the two guys that did that. Sorry for that. All right. So 1995 tops, you can see there. As well as 95 Fleer Ultra with the red foil and the red back here. A lot of parallels in that set, so I can never tell which is the base, base card and which is the parallel. Then we have the 95 score season highlights with Fred McGriff as the MVP of the All-Star game that year. Then I have this weird slideshow one, which is like you can kind of see through it. Uh, Fred McGriff is Leaf 95 slideshow. And the Lumber Company uh, for, the, for Fleer again for 1995 insert series. Moving on, 96, and again, we're out of my normal collecting zone here, so it's a little shady for me on these, so we got 96. Great shot of this 90, uh, 96 Tops card. And then uh, 96 uh, Collector's Choice for Upper Deck, good shot of him there. And we have this uh, die cut card, this laser etch, I think this is, I think it's called Tops Laser, actually. Um, a strange set, if you ask me. But there you go, interesting nonetheless. Our only 90, 1996 card, 
or 98th card, I'm sorry, 1998 score, still on the Braves. And here we are on the Tampa Bay Rays, at this point, the double Rays, uh, 1999 tops. And that is the opening day series. And I've got this uh, Ionix, this Upper Deck Ionix card, again, on the Rays from 2000. Here's Upper Deck Black Diamond from 2001, as well as Upper Deck, these victory cards. I like this victory set. I mean, they're, they're cheap, I guess. That's why nobody else likes them, but I don't know. I think they look good. And finally, I never remember him on the Dodgers, but I do have one Dodgers card of him for this SP Authentic from 2003. So there you have it. That is my entire Fred McGriff collection. Congrats, Crime Dog, on your election to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Hope you guys enjoy this collection, and I'll see you next time.